is a uh, formula revision video of control system subject. So this is a very important subject. There's a lot of questions that can come from this subject. So this is a formula revision of control system. We'll be discussing all the important equations, uh, the block diagram uh, deduction and everything in this video. So this is a part one. We'll be doing a part two uh, in which we'll be discussing all the other important areas. Okay. So in this video, we'll be mainly concentrating on the basic concepts of uh, the types of control system, the transfer function, how poles are obtained, how zeros are obtained, the various different transforms that we use in this uh, control systems and also the block diagram, uh, its deduction, uh, all those things. Okay, so moving on to the uh, first important thing, the control system, we know that there's a lot of uh, areas and there's a lot of uh, things which we discuss in control system and the broad classification of control system can be as open loop control system and closed loop control system. Open loop control system means uh, there is no feedback. Okay, so there is an input, there is an output, there is a system with this transfer function. G of S represents the transfer function. So transfer function is actually the response of the system. Okay, so uh, you can write the transfer function G of S as output by input. There is no feedback or anything connected to the open loop control system. So this is a general structure of an open loop control system. And for the case of a closed loop control system, there is a feedback. So it is a closed loop. So you can uh, simply think it of like an open loop control system with the feedback. Okay, so that is a closed loop control system. Here, the feedback can be either negative or positive. Here, uh, this HFS is the transfer or the function of the feedback loop or that system. And it is connected to the negative uh, terminal of this summing unit. And hence it is a negative feedback. It can be positive or it can be negative. And the transfer function will be CS by RS. That is output by input is equal to G of S by 1 plus G of S H of S. Here it is plus because it is a negative feedback. If it was a positive feedback then it will be minus. That is G of S by 1 minus G of S H of S. Okay. So this is how the variation or the basic classification of a control system uh, is like this open loop and closed loop. The transfer function is like this. For the case of a closed loop control system, especially this is a very simple thing. For a closed loop control system, C of S by R of S, that is output by input is equal to G of S by 1 plus G of S H of S. G of S is a gain or the uh, function of this particular path, and H of S is for the gain of the, you can think it of as a gain of feedback. So G of S by 1 plus G of S H of S or it can be 1 minus G of S H of S. Now talking about the uh, the stability and the accuracy of these two type of system. This is a very commonly asked type of question. Okay, For the case of a open loop control system, it is less accurate. Because there can be variation in the input side while we are measuring the output. And there is no controlling element. So the accuracy uh, as compared to a closed loop control system is less for an open loop control system but it is more stable the stability is more whereas for the case of closed loop control system you should know that it is more accurate because of this feedback if there is any variations happening this feedback element is acting as a controlling element so more accurate it is but it is less stable so these two points you should be very knowing very thoroughly because it is a very commonly asked type of question Next, so we are discussing about the transfer functions. So this, uh, let us think that G of S is a transfer function. You can write it as output function by input function. Okay, so that is a transfer function. And if you find the roots of this, uh, that is if you write the transfer function like Y of S by X of S, it is having a numerator and a denominator. If you find the roots of the numerator, you will be getting zeros. If you find the roots of the denominator, you will be getting poles. So this is the pole and zero concept. This is very, very important while going for discussing this control system subject. Poles and zeros. This poles and zeros, especially poles, is used for determining the stability of a system. Okay, so I've done a separate video on the poles and zeros and plotting of poles and zeros. Everything I've done a separate video, I'll share that link in description box, okay? Just know that you will be uh, reducing the transfer function and you will be obtaining the poles and zeros. Okay. And also for the system to be stable, 
the poles should be in the negative quadrant okay anyway i have discussed about all these things in detail in that video i'll share that video okay next from the transfer function you can find the gain of a system the gain of a system is obtained by putting s s is equal to 0 in a transfer function let us take an example s by 4 by x square by 6 x square plus 6x six plus 9 here put s is equal to 0 so all these s coefficients on and s square coefficients will get vanished and remo remaining is 4 by 9 that is a gain of a system so this is a general description or a very brief description about the transfer function open loop and closed loop classification its properties and how the transfer function of open loop and closed loop is happening so i have not stuffed all the unwanted equations just like in all my formula revision videos i am not including all the unwanted equations i am only including the equations which are which are very important which can come or which has high probability to come in the examination next let us discuss about the most important transforms that we used in control system there are a lot of other transforms but the most commonly used one are Laplace and Issa transform. What is the equation for its transform and its inverse? Let us see. For the Laplace transform, we generally use Laplace transform to represent uh, continuous time systems or uh, yeah, continuous time systems we represent using that is we take the Laplace transform and for discrete systems we take Issa transform. For continuous domain, uh, Laplace and for uh, discrete or digital domain we take is a transform so the laplace transform is f of s is equal to the laplace transform of that is l of f of t which is a continuous time function uh, that is the function in time domain 0 to infinity f of t e raised to minus s t dt so we uh, represent that in the s domain okay so 0 to infinity f of t e raised to minus s t dt is a laplace transform it's a very basic thing everybody will be knowing this anyway the inverse is f of t that is from this if you want to find the f of t then 1 by 2 pi c minus i infinity to c plus i infinity c is a constant e raised to minus st f of s d of s okay so this is how we take the laplace and its inverse next one is Fourier transform uh, for uh, for infinite series we take it is an infinite series transform Fourier transform f of j omega is equal to 0 to infinity f of t e raised to j omega t dt where f of t is a continuous time function then if you want to find the inverse of the Fourier transform f of t is equal to 1 by 2 pi this pi integral minus infinity to infinity f of j omega e raised to j omega t d omega that is we take the Fourier transform function here into e raised to j omega t d omega. Okay, so that is uh, Fourier transform and its inverse. Next one, the very commonly used one is a Issa transform. X of Issa is equal to sigma, that is summation, i is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n Issa raised to minus n. This is a very commonly used equation, so please note this down. Then for finding the inverse, x of n is equal to 1 by 2 pi j integral x of z, uh, z raised to n minus 1 dz. So this is how we take z transform and its inverse. Now let us discuss about the final value theorem and the initial value theorem. We In order to solve the uh, transfer function uh, equations and for reducing, we use these two theorems. According to the final value theorem, x of infinity is equal to limit s tends to 0 s into x of s. That is you can uh, replace this x of s with this expression. That is x of infinity equal to limit s tends to 0 s into x of s. So if you encounter some uh, unreducible terms, we use these theorems. Also you can write x of infinity is equal to limit z tends to 1 z minus 1 x of z. So these two expressions are uh, from the final value theorem. Then the next theorem is an initial value theorem that is x of 0. This is infinity the final or the ex extreme term. For the initial value that is x of 0 you can represent as limit s tends to infinity s into x of s. This is the initial value theorem and the first one is the final value theorem. So we use these two theorems to reduce the transfer function expressions. Okay. 
so if you encounter some uh, problems in solving or reducing sometimes we can use these theorems that is the final value and the initial value theorem next let us see the expressions for the open loop uh, and closed loop transfer function in everything okay next we are going to see some basic functions that we use in control system sometimes we give it as an input to these systems okay so uh, to find the output so you should be knowing this and also the uh, the equation for the transfer function of open loop and closed loop so we have already discussed the basic equation the uh, in order to generalize these two equations i have included this okay so the basic functions are unit step ramp and parabolic function unit step these are basic functions we study in signals and all uh, subjects as basic things unit step means u of t is equal to 0 for t less than 0 for t greater than or equal to 0 it will be a step the value is 1 so it is a unit step unit ram signal this r of t is equal to t into u of t so we need to uh, sometimes apply these functions as an input to get the response so that's why we are discussing this then for unit parabolic function p of t is equal to half t square u of t that is a equation for a unit parabolic function then the open loop transfer function h open loop of s that is in s domain this is being represented is equal to k into jp of s into jb of s these are, these are gains the closed loop transfer function h c l represents the closed loop in s domain k gp of s by 1 plus k uh, 1 plus k gp of s into gb of s this is just like uh, we have already discussed right h is equal to g of s by 1 plus g of s h of s just like that form okay so this is the open loop and closed loop transfer function these are some basic signals we or basic functions which we need to use as input to this control systems okay so now we are going to discuss the the block diagram reduction that is we use this block diagram to represent the control systems the transfer function everything in a in a uh, diagrammatical method right and sometimes we need to reduce this uh, block diagrams and how can we reduce this what all things we can use uh, let us see and also how uh, can we represent a block diagram as a signal flow graph signal flow graph is very important in control systems we uh, represent again in graphical method or in a diagrammatical method a system using a signal flow graph it is like a signal flow graph okay so how to convert a block diagram to signal flow next uh, we are going to discuss both those things okay Next, let us see the block diagram reduction method. So, this is how we represent, see, this, this is how we represent various branches and uh, various blocks and summing units and variables using block diagram method. This is nothing but a representation of certain systems or uh, its transfer functions. Everything we can represent using this block diagram method. And we need to sometimes reduce this block diagrams based on certain variations or inputs. Okay. So, how to what are the various methods that are being used in block diagram reduction let us see first one is cascading see here x1 is a variable x1 uh, g1 and g2 are the two gains they are given as separate blocks here so the resultant is it, this x1 will pass through this g1 and g2 and you will get the product of x1 g1 and g2 right you can instead of this i'm give that is these methods are actually giving an, another option you can all replace this like this just like that so this is a block combining x1 and x2 both gains are multiplied together and given as a single block here it was two separate blocks and x1 will pass through this block that is a single block and you will be again getting the same result x1 into g1 g2 next this is a summing point okay this is a block these are branches so moving summing point after the block so if you see here this summing point is in front of the block so if you want to move this ahead that is after sorry not ahead after the block how can you do it let us see so here x1 is being given to the positive uh, point of the summing block x2 is given to there is a plus or minus in that uh, area or in that summing portion so the resultant will be here what will be coming here it will be x1 plus or minus x2 will be the output of this summing block and it is being given to g so the resultant is g into x1 plus or minus x2 now how can we replace this block 
or this diagram by moving this summing point after the block. Let us see. So here if you see this x1 is only having a product of g. So x1 g then we have placed the summing point here and this summing point this signal is given to the positive point or positive terminal of the summing point and then we are giving x2 then multiplying that with g then it is being given to the summing point with plus or minus sign here there is a plus or minus so the resultant after that is this will be x2 g plus or minus or here you can write this as plus or minus g x2 here it is x1 g right so combining these two in this after this summing block you will get g x1 plus or minus x2 okay so this is nothing but the variations of this block diagrams that is how can you take this and place here how can you place this here that is how can you change the arrangements of this block diagram only that we are doing now this this is required in some times if you reduce this block diagrams okay so i hope this is clear so we have placed this summer in front of this block so if you see this diagram there is no summing points in front of any of these blocks it is placed after the blocks that is the block is having gain okay so like this x1 into g plus x2 into g that is plus or minus x2 into g so combining that two taking the g outside x1 plus or minus x2 into g then the third method is moving summing point ahead of block that is here we have placed this summing point after the block but sometimes the summing point will be actually after the block and if you want to place it in front or ahead of the block how will you do it x1 g then the summing point plus x2 so there this is g x1 plus or minus x2 okay so this here the g is not common the g is only being multiplied with x1 so g x1 plus or minus x2 and if you want to change the uh, summing block or move the summing block in front of or ahead of the gain blocks you will be getting like this x1 then a summing block then x1 is given to the positive terminal then from this path you are giving x2 since there is no gain here with x2 you are placing a 1 by g that is later on we are going to multiply this x2 with a g block there is a g block so in order to cancel out that g we are already giving a 1 by g here so x2 into 1 by g it is being given to plus or minus terminal of the summing block then here from this side x1 is being given so the resultant will be g x1 plus or minus x2 it is actually plus or minus 1 by g into g into x2 the whole into g so this g and g will get cancelled and you will be getting only plus or minus x2 here after this okay so this is how you can place the summing point in front of the gain block okay so i hope this uh, this much of reduction is clear to you and these are some techniques you can use for reducing the block diagram next we are going to see some more methods uh, which we use for reducing of block diagrams so moving of a takeoff point after a block this is called a takeoff point see here x1 is a single branch or a or a line or a branch and this is a takeoff point we take from this x1 and we are taking in this direction okay so this is nothing but x1 and if you want to move this takeoff point after the block that is this is the block after the block if you want to place how will you take so here just use your logic that is if uh, takeoff point is coming from this direction the out the branch the value of that branch will be x1 g so you have to you only require x1 so you have to cut off this g so for that you will place a 1 by g very simple just these are actually very 
logical things which you can do in your mind. See here, this is how you uh, move or take off point after the block. This is x1, g and this is x1, g and if you want to bring this take off point to this direction or this point, you will place it here and put a 1 by g here to remove this g because when you are taking a value from this point, it will be x1, g not x1. So you have to eliminate that g for that purpose, you will be putting a 1 by g and the result will be x1. So this is how you can move a take off point ahead, sorry, take off point after a block. And if you want to move this take off point ahead of this block, then it will be like this x1 g this is x1 g and you will be getting x1 into g this is not x1 of g it is x1 into g and how will you place it if you are putting that ahead of this block there is nothing you have to do just put a g because here if you are taking x1 and if you are taking a takeoff point you will be only having x1 but the actual value we need to take off is x1 g so for that we will put a g here so x1 g remaining just like that okay so this is how you move up take off point ahead of a block now how to eliminate a feedback loop so if you want to eliminate a feedback loop you have to get telling you the uh, the point or the concept this is a feedback loop and we have to put up put the transfer function of this feedback loop as a single block and then you can eliminate the feedback loop see here this is x1 this is a summing point, there is a G, there is a feedback path or a branch and that has a gain of H. It is being given to the summing point and that summing terminal is having plus or minus. So, just replace this much of point with its transfer function here. The output is X2. So, input is X1, output is X2 and this block will be having this transfer function. That is nothing but G by 1 plus or minus gh okay so that is a transfer function of this closed loop so you are replacing this closed loop with a single block having its transfer function very simple so these are some of the techniques which you can use for a reducing of block diagrams now let us see how to convert a block diagram to a uh, signal flow graph see how to convert a signal uh, sorry block diagram to a signal flow graph with a simple example so this is a block diagram here you can see this this is a block diagram which is consisting of three blocks, two summing points and two variables which is this is input, this is output and there are uh, two gains in the direct path which is D1 and G2, both are being given to the positive summing terminals and there is a feedback with a value or a gain of H1 and this brand is being given to this summing point to the negative terminal so it is actually a minus H1, minus gain or it is a negative uh, feedback path you can say. And how can we re represent this block diagram using a signal flow graph? I've drawn it here. So uh, in signal flow graph, we don't have uh, uh, blocks or summing points or anything. We just have nodes and branches. Okay, so we are representing these two summing points as these two nodes here. There are two branches which represent input and output. And these branches represent the paths and the feedback path. G1 and G2 are positive uh, gains here since it is being added to the positive and the positive terminal. G1 and G2 are positive. But if you see H1, it is being given to the negative point or the negative terminal of a summing point. So it is actually a negative gain. So you don't have a summing point. So you, you cannot represent it there. So we represent it as minus H1 in that path or in that uh, signal branch. Okay. So this is how you represent signal flow diagrams and this is how you have you can convert a block diagram to a signal flow graph. So these are actually very useful methods because in some question uh, question papers directly block diagram will be given to you, you have to convert it to signal flow graph. So these techniques you can use. So I really hope that these uh, techniques, these deductions, these transfer function and everything will be useful for your preparation. We'll be doing a part two very soon in which we'll be discussing more concepts of control system. So uh, this formula revision video is useful for uh, anybody who is preparing for any competitive examination of electrons because com control system is a very important subject as concerned with these competitive examinations. So if this video is useful, please do give it a thumbs up and also share this video with maximum of friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. 
Thanks for watching and keep on watching.